Okay, welcome to your e-learning uh, answers to your questions that you've given me. So um, this, let's start with 8.1, number 13 and 15, and then 31 to 41. So number 13, let's take a look at that. It uh, says two polygons are similar. Uh, the perimeters are given. Uh, find the perimeter of the other polygon. So one perimeter is 48 centimeters and the ratio is two to three so perimeters perimeter of one to the perimeter of the other one is equal to the ratios of their side lengths so you just set the perimeters equal to the ratios and then solve for the missing piece cross multiply so 48 times 3 is 120 and 24 is 144 equal to two times uh, the perimeter of the second figure. Divide off the two, and you get 72 centimeters is the perimeter of the second figure. Okay, and number 15, it is important to note if you, it's the smaller one or the larger one. So if we say the perimeter of the smaller one is to the perimeter of the larger one, then your ratio, the ratio of the smaller leg to the ratio of the larger leg, excuse me, the length, not the ratio, uh, the ratio lengths of the smaller figure to the larger figure should be in the same positions. Um, so let's look at 15. The perimeter of the larger polygon is 120. So we don't know the perimeter of the smaller polygon, but we do have uh, the ratio is one to six. So the one goes on top and the six goes on the bottom because the one is smaller than the six and you solve it the same way. But make sure you get the small and the large uh, in the same positions. Small on top, large on bottom. Uh, or either both large on top and both smalls on bottom. So we cross multiply. So six times the perimeter of the smaller figure and one times 120, and then divide off the six, and the perimeter of the smaller figure is 20, and that would be yards. Okay, let's continue on with thir in 31. We have uh, JKLM is similar. There's your similar figure um, symbol to EFGH. And it says, find the perimeter of each polygon. Well, JKLM, let's just draw these so we have these. And J is there. Whoops. J. K is down here at 90 degrees, J is 65 degrees. This side length is 30, that side length is 20, M and L. And I'm gonna pause this and draw the other one. Okay, so here's our two figures, and we need to figure out some uh, the perimeters here. So 31 says find the perimeter of each polygon. Well, we need to know a lot of different things. Um, so let's see here, we have um, they are similar, so you can set up ratios. So you could say HG, let me do some different colors here. HG is the same as ML. Uh, so that's 3 uh, to ML. Well, let's write that down. 3 is to ML as, and then you pick something else that we have both information on, and that would be EF is the same as, or excuse me, similar to JK. Again, make sure you go the same direction. And what I'm saying is uh, don't mismatch. Go, don't go from small to large and then the large to small. So we're going small to large here. 3 is to ml as 8 is to 20. And then you cross multiply again. 8 uh, times M, the length of ml and 3 times 20 is 60. Divide off the 8 and you're going to get your answer here. Okay, so ML is 7.5, and we can put that here. And if you look at KL, KL uh, and GF, we can get both those the same. So KL and GF are the middle letters there, so they go together. And we can get that perimeter. Um, we could have just found the perimeter of 1 and did what we did on the last problem and used the ratios to figure those things out. Um, so let's just find, go ahead and find y. Uh, y uh, is to 30. Y is to 30. And what I'm looking at here is he is where y is. Uh, um, 
H and E, so that should match M and J, which MJ is 30. So remember, we're always matching up the letters based on the four letters they've given us. So Y is to 30, and then you just pick uh, two other legs that you know the length of. So we'll go ahead and use the E, F, and the J, K one since we have those. Those were given. 8 is to 20. And we'll just cross multiply. 8 times 30 is 240. And divide off the 20. And Y is equal to 12. So if Y is 12... So the first, the smaller figure is 12 plus 3 plus 11 plus 8. So 15 and 11 is 26 plus 8 is 34. So the perimeter of the smaller figure is 34. So um, let's go ahead and do what we did on the last problem. We'll do the perimeter of the smaller figure is to the perimeter of the larger figure. And then pick two legs again. Again, we'll use 8 and 20. And then cross multiply. So 34 times 20 is 680, and that's equal to 8 times the perimeter of the larger figure. So we divide off the 8, and the perimeter of the larger figure is going to be 85. Okay, so now we go to 33. Look at this problem, whoops, 33. And it's the same type of thing. And now this is dealing with area. So think of it this way. The area of the smaller figure uh, is to the area of the larger figure as the, the ratio of the smaller length is to the ratio of the larger length. And you're supposed to square both of these. Okay? So let's go ahead and fill this out for 33. Find the area of each polygon. Okay? Okay, so based on uh, some of the things we found, I went ahead and redrew the pictures here. So let's find the area. These are trapezoids, and the area of a trapezoid is one half, the base one plus the base two. That's your top and your bottom. That, those are your parallel sides. Your bases are your parallel sides times the height. So the area of the smaller figure is one half, three plus eight times the height of 11. And let's just do that calculation. Three plus eight is 11. Um, you know, 11 times 11 is 121, so the area of the small one is 121 over 2. So if you divide that by 2, you get 60.5. So that's the area of the smaller one. So I'm going to put the uh, start the uh, ratios down here, 60.5, and let's get the area of the larger one, since we did figure out uh, the 7.5 on the last problem. So this is the larger figure. So 1 half... 7.5 plus 20 times the height. And we don't know x, but we can find it by doing a proportion. So let's use some things that we already know. So 8 is to 11 as, uh, I'm sorry, 8 is to, <laughs> eight is to uh, 20 as 11 is to x. So just drawing here, 8 is to 20 as 11 is to x. And now we just do the cross multiplication and calculate. So 8x equals 11 times 20 is going to give you 220. Divide that by 8, and you will get 27.5 for x. That is your height of your trapezoid. So let's do these calculations. So 20 plus 7.5 is 27.5 times uh, 27.5, which is your height. And then you divide that by 2. And you'll get the area of the larger figure to be 378.125. All right, so that goes in this position at the bottom here. So your areas are equal to the side length squared. So let's use our 8 and 20 again. Those were the ones given in the problem. And we need to square both of these. Okay. And there's other ways you could have done this. We could have found the other area. Um... A, a little bit differently, but uh, I'll go ahead and do it this way. There is more than one way to do these problems. So let's rewrite this. 60.5 is to 378.125 as 64, that's 8 squared, is to 400, that's 20 squared. So uh, this should all work out. Let's just see if this works. 64 
times 378.125. So we're just checking this now. We already figured everything out. Let's see if we did it right. And if there's a problem, we have to go back and find it. So 400 times um, 60.5. Four hundred times sixty point five gives me twenty four thousand two hundred. Okay, so that tells me we did the right thing when we found these. You could go about it many different ways. Um, I think uh, we could have done this with x uh, or y, depending on which way you wanted to do it. But uh, we can. I can do another. Do this another way if you like during class tomorrow. So let's go to number forty one. Number 41, it says, figure A has an area of 48 square feet, and one of the side lengths is 6. Okay, so the 6 is going to go on the same top or bottom. Since the 48 is on the top, the 6 goes on the bottom. Uh, excuse me, on the top. Um, and then it says, find B, uh, figure B has an area of 75 square feet. So it wants to know the other length. So remember when you're doing this, the areas are equal to the um, the ratio lengths squared. So we need to square that and we don't know this x one so we got to square that as well. And then we do the problem. 48 over 75 is equal to 36 over x squared. Cross multiply. 36 times 75 so if you need to pause, you can pause and go back over this. That's 2,700. Divide off the 48. And you take 2,700, divide by 48. And you get 56.25. And you take the square root of both sides. And that should give you 7.5. And again, this is in feet. That's not feet squared because this is a side length. Sides are not squared. It's the area that was already squared. Okay, so that's 8.1. We're going to go to 8.2 now. 8.2, we're going to do 14, 16, and 18. So number 14. Okay, on 14, we have to um, get the angle ECF, this right here. Well, it is a vertical angle to this angle here. And in this triangle... The small one here, you have a 90 degree and a 53 degree. So you can find the vertical angle by taking 180 minus 90 minus 53. And that'll give you the vertical angle and then the answer you need. So in that triangle, um, you get 37 degrees. And so that means the vertical angle is also 37 degrees. That's ECF. So that's the answer to number 14. Now, number 16. 16 is asking for the length of C to F. Okay, so uh, what they don't tell you is these are parallel lines, the top and the bottom uh, here. And so uh, you have a 53 degree at the top of GAC. So that means F. E, C is also 53 degrees, uh, and at angle G it's 90 degrees, angle F is 90 degrees. Uh, so by the angles, triangle A, G, C is similar to triangle E, F, C. Okay, so if that's the case, then we ought to be able to get C, F. So to find C, F, we'll call it X, um, you just set up your proportions. So A, G is 3. That is similar to EF. That's to 9. 3 is to 9 as, and then GC is 4, and CF will call X. So you just match up the same positions and then cross multiply. So 3X equals 36. X is equal to 12. Okay, and then number 18, we're supposed to find the length from D to E. Okay, so we already have Fe is 9. So here's the thing. On triangle DFC here, since we have 45 degrees up at that angle, this is 45 degrees here. 
and we have a 90 degree, which means there's 45 degrees left. And so that means that DF and FC are exactly the same because it's a 45, 45 degree triangle. And if you remember the lot, uh, your rules, um, you know that the hypotenuse times the square root of two is, um, excuse me, a leg times the square root of two is equal to the hypotenuse. So the square root of two times a leg is equal to the hypotenuse. Okay, well, in this case, the hypotenuse is 12 square root of two. So we divide off the square root of two, and the length is 12. So if x is 12, de is 21. Now, if you didn't remember those rules, you do need to realize that 45 and 45, that makes a um, base angles triangle, which means x and x are the same. Okay? x and x are the same. And you have a Pythagorean theorem you could use. So those are your legs. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's your Pythagorean theorem. You had to know that those two were the same length. So x squared plus x squared is equal to 12 square root of 2. Now you have to square that. That's just the length of c, so you have to square it. So on the left side, we get 2 x squareds. And over here, 12 squared is 144. And if you square a square root, the square root sign goes away. So 2x squared is equal to 288. Divide off the 2. And you get a 144, and you take the square root, and you get 12. Add it to the 9, you get 21. And that's how you do all of those problems. Any other questions, I'll answer tomorrow uh, when we get back to school. If not, be watching uh, for your assignment on Google Classroom. Later.